Have you ever thought about the emotional roller coaster that the disciples and the followers of Jesus must have had that last week of Jesus' life? I thought about what would a mother feel like during that time? I tried to put myself in Mary's place and feel the emotions that she might have had. We have the privilege of knowing the rest of the story. We know that Jesus rose from the dead. We sometimes minimize the events of Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday and just gloss over and think about the joy of Easter. So I would like you to walk with me, take those steps, feel those emotions that the disciples and the followers of Jesus had while he suffered and died. Here is Mary's story in my own words. My emotions have resembled a stormy ride on the Sea of Galilee this past week. The sun dawned on an ordinary Sunday morning. Passover was drawing near and Jerusalem and the countries began to buzz with activity. My son Jesus had been teaching the crowds who followed him. At Bethany, he mounted a donkey and rode toward Jerusalem. People began tearing branches from the palm trees and throwing them to the ground ahead of the donkey. Some people even threw their cloaks on the path. All the while they shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. They were calling Jesus a king. This was my son. My heart leaped for joy. Any mother would be proud to see her son so honored. What a joyful day. But then came Monday. Jesus saw the money changers setting up business in the temple. He became angry and threw them out. With this, I could feel the mood of the city begin to shift. People became restless and began talking in small groups. The joy of Sunday was becoming a memory. During the week, the leaders of the temple challenged Jesus' authority more openly as Jesus continued to teach the crowds. He talked more and more about heaven, and he also talked about leaving and coming back. We couldn't understand what he was talking about. On Thursday, some of the women helped the disciples prepare the Passover meal. I was invited to Bethany to celebrate the Passover with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. In the middle of the night, the disciples awakened us and told us that Jesus had been arrested and that he was in court at that very hour. I cried, I screamed, not my Jesus! He never hurt anyone. Why? Why? The disciples kept us informed throughout the night. When morning dawned, we hurried to Jerusalem to see Jesus. The whole city had become a frenzied mob. I feared for my life as people shouted insults and pushed me aside at every turn. I looked up and I saw Jesus standing beside Pilate. He was dressed in a purple robe of a king, but with a crown of thorns upon his head, blood was streaking down his face while tears flowed freely down mine. He looked so tired and weak. I wanted to run up to him and wrap my arms around him and tell him that everything would be all right. Why had they done this to my son? Why, why? My heart was breaking as I heard the crowd yell, crucify him, crucify him. John stood beside me, holding me up. Then I saw Jesus passed by, carrying his cross. It was more than I could bear. He could hardly walk. I noticed all the evidence of the beatings that he had endured. I wanted to shout at these people, is this how you treat your king? Later, the soldiers lifted Jesus up on the cross and I screamed, no, no. My eyes were almost dry. I cried so much. 
I felt as if those waves on the Sea of Galilee were about to pull me under with their mighty power. My son didn't deserve this treatment. On the cross, he forgave those who put him there. And then he asked John to take care of me. About noon, it became so dark, as dark as night. It had an eerie feeling. Then about three o'clock, Jesus cried out, it is finished. And as he did, a bolt of lightning struck the ground and the ground shook, opening the graves of people who had died. They began walking around and onlookers ran terrified from the scene. We couldn't understand what was happening. We later learned that the temple curtain had been torn in half. I couldn't move. There was my firstborn, my son who had been such a good son. He was always ready to help those who were poor and the sick. My son, who spoke with wisdom beyond his years. My son was hanging on a cross like a common criminal. The Spirit of God brought to my mind the words of Simeon. A sword will pierce your soul too. I have not felt such grief even when I lost my beloved Joseph. I continue to ask why. The anger in my heart began to subside. Was this what Simeon had prophesied? The disciples and all of us who had been with Jesus were afraid. Would the authorities come and take us away too? None of us was able to sleep. We spent the night talking and praying and trying to understand all that happened. Since it was a Sabbath, we were not allowed to travel. We continued to huddle together in support of one another. What would happen now? We had so many hopes for the future. Jesus forgave these people for what they had done to him. Could I ever forgive them? When the Sabbath was over today, the younger women went to anoint Jesus' body. They returned out of breath. The stone was rolled away and Jesus was gone. An angel had told them that he had risen. Peter and John didn't believe it, so they ran to the tomb to see for themselves. They also saw the empty tomb. When they returned, John asked if we remember Jesus' words, the Son of Man must die and rise on the third day. My heart was racing. Could Jesus be alive? Could I let my heart become excited again? Or would everything come crashing back down again? Fearfully, we huddled we prayed behind locked doors. Suddenly, Jesus was standing in our midst. My Jesus, you are alive. He didn't stay long, but he offered peace. Oh, how we needed that peace. Then he also said, receive the Holy Spirit. Your sins are forgiven. Forgive others. Jesus forgave those who brutally hurt him. And with God's help, so must I. Think back to the beatings and the agony that Jesus endured at the hands of the Roman soldiers, at the mockings in the crowd, at the weight of the sin that he carried for the whole world, your sins and my sins your disobedience and my disobedience, your lack of love and my lack of love. He died for us. He rose also for you and for me to give us eternal life in heaven. So we have the joy of Easter. 
we know the rest of the story.